Today will be part 119 in the series Scriptures Often Ignored, and today we're going to be talking about the calendar for this upcoming year of 2021 specifically, because I know a lot of you have been wondering about this calendar and have emailed me about this calendar and when it would be available, so I just wanted to do a video now to get it out there and also to tell for those of you who are new to this network why we arrive at the dates we arrive at. Now again, in case you're new to this network, we use the Enoch or Canute calendar, which is based on a 364 day system. And we're going to be going over more of that later on in the video to come for those of you who are new to this. But for those of you who already know about this calendar and have been following this network for how many years now, then this is nothing new to you because here are the dates that are listed for 2021 through 2022. Now it's important that you understand that the Yaudium or the so-called Hebrew New Year always begins sometime around the springtime. So for the upcoming year of 2021, it will begin the evening of March 23rd, 2021, when the sun goes down on that day. So that will commence and begin the new year. Now, as we've also gone over the month of Abyab, which is the first scriptural month, it is always sometime in the spring. And we've gone over according to the Kanuka Enoch calendar, how it's divided by a 30, 30, 31 day season system for each of the corresponding months one two three onward all the way until month 12 so you see right here it goes for 364 days beginning march 23rd 2021 when the sun goes down and ending all the way at march 22nd 2022 when the sun goes down and again this calendar pdf will be linked in the description box below i will also be linking it in the comment box below so that you will have uh, access to it readily available at your fingertips so that you will know when the calendar is and when it begins. Now, of course, there's also the appointed times in the Shabbats. The weekly Sabbath goes from Friday evening to Saturday evening. And then there are also the seven appointed times that are listed right here. So as you see right here, the appointed time that's listed first is Pesach or Passover, according to the Yaudium or the ancient Hebrew date, according to Uyakra or Leviticus chapter uh, 23, this is when it will begin in and in according to the Gregorian dates. So Passover will be from the evening or sundown Monday, April 5th, 2021, all the way until sundown Tuesday, April 6th of 2021. And then you have matzah unleavened bread. It's important to know that matzah or unleavened bread is for seven consecutive days. And it starts on the evening of April 6th, 2021, going all the way until April 13th of 2021. So it's a seven day festival appointed times. Then there's also first fruits that occurs right around the middle of it, which will be the first day of the week or so-called evening Saturday, April 10th through Sunday, April 11th, 2021 from sundown to sundown. Then you have the summer appointed time, which is the Feast of Weeks, commonly known as the Harvest Festival. It's incorrectly known as the Pentecost, and we've gone over that uh, on multiple occasions, and we've talked about that in the video before. Again, if you would like to learn more about how to observe these appointed times that are listed right here, or if you have questions wondering, well, how do I observe these appointed times? How can I observe them? Where can I find references about them? Please take a look at our videos that are linked in the description box below. I have to keep reiterating that to people because I'm not sure if they're actually clicking on the links or not, but the videos are readily available for you folks. So you can learn more about the spring appointed times, which are these three, Passover, Unleavened Bread, and First Fruits. Then there's also the Harvest Festival, which is the summer appointed time and then there are the fall appointed times trumpets atonement and tabernacles as well which are also listed that occur in the fall as you see trumpets will begin around september 21st through september 22nd 2021 from sundown to sundown day of atonement will be september 30th through october 1st 2021 and then there's also tabernacles which is an eight-day festival it runs for eight consecutive days and it starts october 5th 2021 going all the way until October 13th, 21. And I also listed those uh, right here. I listed the notes about how matzah unleavened bread runs for seven consecutive days. And the days right here are listed as you can see. And then there's also tabernacles in the last great day that runs for eight consecutive days right here from October 5th 
through October 13th of 2021. Now you're also supposed to sound the shofar or the shofar at the beginning of each month. But if you do not have a shofar in your possession, that's all right because you can also use your voice and praises as well to be the shofar or to sound the trumpet at the beginning of the month to thank and praise Yahuwah for a new month. Now on page three of the document, I also go over more about how to observe it and also the scriptural references. So you see right here, Yahuwah the Father, Yahusha the Son, and those are the restored names of the Father and the Son, respectively, in case you don't already know that. But here are the notes for the calendar. So again, the weekly Sabbath goes from the evening, from Friday to evening, Saturday, from sundown to sundown. That's how we observe it on this network. Now, here are the appointed times that are listed. So again, Pasak Passover, the evening of the 14th day of the first month. No, this is not talking about January 14th. This is talking about the scriptural 14th day of the the scriptural first month and we'll go over more of that in case you're new to this or wondering what I'm talking about but it's from Monday April 5th to Tuesday April 6th 2021 Yahusha is our Pasach Passover lamb you can learn more about that in Uya Kra Leviticus chapter 23 verses 4 through 5 and Aur Yahu Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 20 we also give reference to unleavened bread how again it runs for seven consecutive days from April 6th to April 13th 2021 from the evening from sundown to sundown the first and seventh days are supposed to be convocations or made apart gatherings again if you do not have anyone to have convocations with you can simply have it in your home no survival work is to be done in those days you can learn more about that in Leviticus 23 verses 6 through 8 there's also first fruits that talks about the Omer count and the sheep offering and then we've gone over to the feast of weeks as well or Shabuah Utha or commonly known as Shabuot which again has two counts to it we've gone over that in our harvest festival video so we're not going to go over it right now but there are two counts to it you have the seven sabbath count and then you have also the 50 day count from that point and when you count from that point after the first fruits you arrive to this day right here which is july 17th through july 18th 2021 and that's when it is you can learn more about that in leviticus 23 verses 15 through 22 and also in our harvest festival video that was done covering this subject more in depth then you have the fall appointed times that are listed right here which are trumpets atonement and tabernacles in the last great day that's also attached to tabernacles you have trumpets right here which is around september 21st through september 22nd of 2021 which is the blowing of the shupar or shofar which is the first day of the seventh scriptural month not july 1st which is to be a sabbath a convocation no survival work is to be done on that day and you can learn more about that in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 23 through 25 and then you also have the day of atonement which is commonly known as Yom Kippur Yom or Yom Kippur which is the 10th day of the seventh scriptural month which for 2021 will be from the evening of September 30th 2021 all the way until the evening of October 1st 2021 which is also to be a Sabbath no work is to be done during that day it is also to be a day of humbling your being or fasting and you can learn more about that in Leviticus 23 verses 26 through 32 and then there's also tabernacles in the last great day which run for eight consecutive days from October 5th through October 13th 2021 you're to dwell in booths if you have them such as a tent and the first and eighth day are to be sabbaths a convocation is to be held on them and no servile work is to be done you can learn more about that in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 33 through 42 on your own time so again this is the document right here that lists all the appointed times I will leave it in the description box below so you can print it out for your reference for you and your family or for your household or whomever it is of, to be serviced to so these are the respective dates for 2021 through 2022 as it's known in the Gregorian and when they begin. This is the calendar for next year, for the next scriptural year, not this current one, but for the one that will begin in the spring of 2021, going all the way until around the springtime of 2022. Now you can see right here, we also list the 12 scriptural months from one to 12. We list how many days each month has, and we list when it begins according to the Gregorian date 
date right here so you have it for your reference. Now again, if you have already tuned into the Kanuk Enoch calendar video that was done back in 2018, then really you can stop here because you already know how we arrived to the dates and why we use the dates that we use. But for those of you who are new to this network or who have no idea about the Enoch calendar or have no knowledge about the Enoch calendar, and if you're wondering why we arrived to the dates that we arrived with, because a question I commonly get is why are your dates different than the Jewish calendar, for example? The Jewish are going to be observing their appointed times a little bit differently, or this calendar observes their appointed times based on these dates, and this calendar observes their appointed times based on this these dates over here. So why are your dates different, and why do you arrive at the days that you arrive at? Well, what I'm going to do for those of you who are new to this network or wondering why I observe the calendar according to the Enoch calendar and why why I arrived to the dates that I arrived to and why we arrived to these dates being the appointed times for Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and so on respectively. If you're wondering why we arrived to these dates in the Gregorian and how we come to these dates, what I'm going to do for you all is I'm going to actually copy and paste the Enoch calendar video that was done back in 2018. I'm going to copy and paste that video into this video here so that that you have a better understanding of why we arrive to the dates that we arrive to. Now the copy and paste the parts that we're going to copy and paste is about 90 minutes long. It's about an hour and 30 minutes long. Again, if you are already familiar with the Enoch calendar or if you've already done your extensive studies on this or if you've already seen our Enoch calendar video that was done back in 2018, well then you do not need to tune in unless you want to. That's definitely your prerogative but if you already know why we observe these dates and why we arrive to these dates because you've been following this network for well over three years well then you can stop the video right here and print out the calendar for your own records but for those of you who would like a refresher on the Enoch calendar or new to this network and wondering why I arrived to these dates here's the Enoch calendar video copy and paste it from 2018 and because this is a truth network, we use the restored name of Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha the Son, read from right to left in the Yahudith Paleo Hebrew tongue. We also use Ruk HaKadush, commonly known as the Made Apart Spirit, and Alua for the restored title as well. And like I said, prayerfully, this will shed light to this topic and answer all of your questions and will also do away with all of the confusion and some of the confusing doctrines that are out there. Now this video will be formatted a little bit differently because there's just so much to go over and there's so much to expose because your translators did a wonderful job trying to keep this stuff hidden from you and trying to keep the truth hidden but the truth will be revealed to you today and so now I have listed right here the difference between the phrase new moon and new month because what you're going to see in the Yaudiath Hebrew language it's two different words the word month is Kadash which is from Strong's H2320 or H2321 and we're going to be taking a look at it but there's two different words that actually means moon the first word is Yarak which is Strong's H3391 and H3394 and then the phrase full moon which means Kasa from Strong's H3677 and Psalms 81 verse 3 and we're going to be taking a look at all of these so you can see the bigger agenda because in your scripture should it say new moon or should it say new month? Because a lot of people, they just see the phrase new moon and automatically assume that, oh, well, it says new moon. So that means that the calendar is based on the new moon and each month is based on a new moon. But is this the case or is there something else that they're not telling you? Let's find out. Because like I said, the translators and the Masoretes and the Jewish faction, they've gone over and above and beyond to try to hide this stuff from you. Not anymore. Because like I said, the truth is finally being revealed to you today. But we're here in Strong's and we're here at H2320. Now they pronounce it Kodesh, but in the restored translation, it's pronounced Kadash. Now notice here how they say new moon in a month, but the short definition just means month. You you see right here new moon and a month and this word occurs 283 times in the so-called Old Testament 
But is there an agenda when it comes to these translators? Let's find out because the Brown Driver Briggs also defines it as new moon or month. However, we're going to see the truth and that this word should only mean the word month. It does not mean the word moon because there's another Yaudiath Hebrew word that means the word moon. They purposely added this here to get the phrase new moon to keep a different calendar adding and taking away. And we're going to prove that right now because as you see with the occurrences and the first occurrences in Brashith or Genesis 7 11 you see the word month is being used and throughout this all the occurrences you pretty much see the word month being used even in Brashith Genesis 8 4 and we're going to be talking more about that also you see the word here in Genesis 8 5 the word month being used the word month being used and I'm going to show you even more now we're not going to go over all of the occurrences but i just want you to see the agenda that these translators are doing and what they're using and what they're trying to keep hidden from you because here we are at all 283 occurrences for this word kadash they claim that it has two different definitions in the english kadash meaning new moon and month but what you're going to find out is that it only means the word month and there is another word in the yaudiath hebrew language that means the word moon and that there's an agenda and a cover-up going on here and I'm going to prove that to you right now because of all the 283 occurrences you see that it means the word month 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 and throughout pretty much this entire list it means the word month and I'll be sure to link this in the description box below so you can take a look at this too on your own time but we're going through pretty much all the book of Genesis and you see how it means the word month in 814 month and 2914 it means the word month and 3824 you see how it means the word month here and even in Exodus chapter 12 verse 2 when it's talking about the month of Beeb how it means the word month and how the word month is being used here it does not mean the word moon the word moon is not being used in this passage and in this translation right here so you see that it means the word month even in the book of exodus month all over the place and even right here in Exodus 23, 15, you see the word month, Abib. In Exodus 34, 18, month, Abib, not the word moon. You see the word month. And if we keep going, you see the words month all over the place, month. And the reason we're going over this is so you can see the bigger agenda behind this. However, there are certain places here that you actually see the phrase new moon. Now, right here, you see it in 1 Samuel chapter 20 or Shamuel, where it says new moon. It says tomorrow is the new moon in certain translations, such as the KJV. You see it again right here in 1 Samuel 20, 24, new moon. You see it right here. And again, this is the word Kadash if you scroll all the way down to 1 Samuel. But interestingly enough, you see right here new moon being used. But then right here, the word month is being being used right there same for first Samuel 2034 new moon is being used right here but then month is being used and notice how the main places that you see new moon being used is when it has to do with feasts and Shabbats and counting the feast Shabbats and the new month very interesting and suspicious indeed now, much of the uses for this word Kadash or how they pronounce Kodesh you see that it means month all throughout first Kings you see the word month 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 but note what happens when you get to second kings 4 23 where it also mentions the word sabbath or shabbat now all of a sudden it goes from the word month to mean new moon and see right here if you keep going in second kings you see the word month right there you see the word month you see the word month month right here in second kings but when it mentions in its next to a shabbat now all of a sudden it changes to new moon why is that the case just like we went over for the resurrection account how miatan sabaton means on one of the sabbaths but the only time you see it meaning first day of the week is when it comes to what when it talks about our Messiah being resurrected, those are the only times you see the phrase first day of the week being used, the translators adding and taking away.
And we'll briefly go over more of that later on in the video to come, but I just wanted to give you an idea and show you that the phrase and the correct word should be new month, not new moon, because the word moon in the Yaudia through the Hebrew comes from this word right here, Yarak, which is from Strong's H3394 right here and occurs 26 times in scripture. And then there's also this phrase right here, Kasa, as it's pronounced, or as they say, Kase, which means full moon in Strong's H3394. 3677, which has two occurrences, one of them in Psalms 81 3, which we're going to talk about, and Proverbs 720. And now we're going to prove to you that when it comes to the ancient calendar, the ancient calendar is not based on the moon. I repeat, the ancient calendar is not based on the moon alone. It is not based on the lunar calendar, nor are Shabbats based on lunar Shabbats. They are not used, nor are they counted based on the moon, and we're going to prove that scripturally right now, because here we are in Shemuth, or Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, and as you can see right here, the word month is used. When Yahuwah gives instructions about the first Passover and when to count the months, notice how it says first month, the first month of your year. It does not say the word moon. It says the first month, even in the good old KJV right here here, month, first month, which is what? It comes from the Strong's H2320, which is Kadash, a month, not new moon, but rather new month. Another witness we have for this is Deuteronomy or Debarium chapter 16 verse 1, which is also the Torah, the Thura, the first five books of scripture. As you can see right here, it says month of Abib, the month, not the moon, but the month of Abib. Even the KJV says the same thing too. Month of Abib twice right there. And that word month is comes from what? Kadesh, Strong's H2320. They claim that it means new moon, but it's actually new month. And as you can see right here, month is the Kadash right there. But see, the translators did a great job attempting to hide and cover this up, and they've done a great job trying to keep this hidden from you, not anymore, because now we're at Psalms 81.3, and you can see right here, it says, blow the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day in the KJV. Now it says right here, you see the phrase new moon, but when you look at the word moon right there, well, is it your rock that's being used, or is it Strong's H2320, which means means month as we've just proven. So it should say new month right here. New month, new month. It should not say new moon and we're going to go over why this is so important. And like we said earlier in the video, the places that you commonly see the phrase new moon right here in your translated versions is when it has to do with Sabbaths and appointed festivals. Why is that the case? Because when you look at new moon right here, well, let's look at the word moon. They use Strong's H2320 right here, which means month. So it should say new month. But notice how it has to do with new moons when it coincides with the Shabbats and the appointed festivals in Second Chronicles 2.4. And this is not the only place because we see it here too in 2 Chronicles 8.13. Notice how it says Sabbaths, new moons in these translations, but we know what it should really say because the word moon right here does not mean the word Yarak according to Strong's H3394, but actually uses the word month in Strong's H2320, which means the word month. It should say new month right there, but it only says new moon when it comes to and has to do with and coinciding with Sabbaths and the feast. The reason the translators purposely added that word moon there is because they want you to keep their calendars to keep the Jewish calendar and all these other lunar calendars and lunar Shabbat calendars which we're also going to be exposing more but even in 2nd Chronicles 31 verse 3 you see the same thing notice how it says on the Shabbats and these translations have new moon and appointed festivals but when you actually look at the word moon right here you see once again it means Kadash it should say new month and this is not the only place because it's here in 2 Kings 4.23 
Also, because it says it's not the new moon or the Sabbath in these versions and translations. All right, but the word right here says Kadash again, which means new month. So it should say new month. And another common place that you see this is Ezekiel 46 verse 1, because notice how it has to do with the Sabbath once again. But then these translations, they all use and they all say the new moon, even the KJV. All right, but when you look at the Yaudiath Hebrew, it's Strong's H2. 2320 Kadash, which means month. Therefore, it should say new month, not new moon. Of course, there are probably more examples in the so-called Old Testament, but I just wanted to show you and give you a gist of the agenda behind all this. And even the Greek shows you the exact same thing, because in the Greek, there's two different words. There are two different Greek words to mean month and moon, just like there are in the English to mean month and to mean moon. Well, here in Strong's G3376, this word right here, mean, means a month and has 18 occurrences occurrences throughout scripture. If you look right here in Strong's G4582 Selene, right here it has nine occurrences and it means moon. So you see right here in the Greek there are two different words. There's one word right here in the Greek that means month and then one word that means moon just like in the Yaudiath Hebrew language they do not mean the same thing. They're two different words. And it's just like that in the English too. The correct phrase should be new month and your word should say new month. But again, it's all part of the agenda. And we're also going to be talking about Psalms 104, 19 later on in this video. But this is just to give you a Yaudium, a Hebraic understanding of these words and how your translators are trying to hide the truth from you. Not anymore. We've also gone over the Greek right here, how there are two different words. One word means month and one word means moon, as you can see right here, just like in the Yaudiath. But now we're going to be going over more witnesses to show you and prove to you that the lunar calendar is not scriptural. Scripture tells us that from the mouth of two or more witnesses can every matter be established. And we see this in Debarium or Deuteronomy 19.15, Mathatha Yahu, Matthew 18.16, where the Messiah himself says this, and also 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. You need two or more witnesses for every single matter. That includes the calendar, because using just the moon to determine the feast days, Shabbats, and appointed times, etc. is only one witness, not two or more witnesses. But what about the flood account? Because now we're going to be proving with scripture itself and with the Torah that the lunar calendar is not used, nor is it scriptural. Because now we're here in Brashia through Genesis chapter 7 verse 11 when the flood began. And it says, in the 600th year of Nuke or Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, and notice the word month, not moon, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of the Shamayim, or the heavens, were open. Now the flood ended according to Brashia, Genesis 8, 3 through 4, and the waters receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of the 150 days, the waters diminished. Verse 4 says, and in the seventh month, the 17th day of the month, the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. So we see that the flood had a duration and it rained a duration of a total of 150 days. And we have another witness to prove this in Brashia, Genesis chapter 7, verse 24, where it says, And the waters were mighty on the earth 150 days. So we see that the flood account total was 150 days total, according to the Torah, according to Scripture itself. We see that according to Scripture, it started and began on the 17th day of the second month or 217 and then ended on the 17th day of the seventh month or 717. The question is if this were a lunar calendar and if we were only going based on the moon and based on the lunar calendar would we arrive at 150 days? Let's see mathematically speaking. 
Now, if we do the math here, we start to see something and uncover something even more. Because when you do the mathematics, the lunar calendar is said to be 354 days a year, and it goes by 29 and a half days per month based on the moon. So you would do the first month based on the moon as 29 days. The second month would be 30 days if you're using the lunar calendar, and it will be so on for a total of 12 months, which will get you a total of 354 days a year. Now, if we go based on the flood account, we see that it started to rain on the 17th day of the second month. So the second month, according to the lunar calendar, has 30 days in it. So that would mean there was a remainder of 13 days. The third month would have been 29 days, according to the lunar calendar. The fourth month, 30 days. The fifth month, 29 days. The sixth month, 30 days. And then the seventh month would be 17 days because the rain stopped on the 17th day of the seventh month. However, if you add all this up, and if you do the math right here, so add these numbers up according to the lunar calendar, you would only arrive and end up at a grand total of 148 days, not 150 according to scripture. Again, we need two or more witnesses to establish every matter. And what this is showing you is that it's showing you that the lunar calendar was not used during the time of scripture and is not scriptural. And that includes the lunar Sabbath because Yahuwah, our creator, is not the author of confusion. But here are more witnesses because, again, we need two or more witnesses to establish every matter. Here we are in the Esther and Revelation accounts here in Hadassah, Esther chapter 1, verse 4, where it says when he showed the riches of his esteemed reign and the splendor of his excellent greatness for many days a hundred and eighty days Hadassah Esther 2 12 says now when the turn of each young woman came to go in to the sovereign Akshurush after she had completed 12 months according to the regulations for the women for the days of the preparation were completed as follows six months with oil of myrrh and six Six months with perfumes and with the preparations of women. Well, according to this, six months is 180 days. But if you look at the lunar calendar, mathematically speaking, you see that six months, according to the lunar calendar, is 177 days because a full year is 354 days. So if you divide 354 by 2, you get the number 177 because month 1 is 29 days, month 2 is 30 days, Month three is 29 days, month four, 30 days, month five, 29 days, and month six, 30 days, giving us a grand total of 177 days, not 180 days. So if they were using the lunar calendar back then, as some people claim that they were, well, then it should say 177 days here in Hadassah or Esther chapter one, verse four, not 180 so we see right here that the lunar calendar could not have been used. Now we have two or more witnesses. We have the flood account and we have the account in Hadassah and Esther. And that's not the only place because we also see here in Kazun, the book of Revelation chapter 11 verses 2 through 3, which just so happened to ironically enough talk about the two witnesses. But it says here, but cast out the court which is outside the dwelling place and do not measure it for it has been given to the Gentiles or the other nations and they shall trample the Kadash or made apart city underfoot for 42 months and I shall give unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy 1260 days clad in sackcloth now we know 42 months is 1260 days or a total of three and a half years However, mathematically speaking, the lunar calendar, 42 months in the lunar calendar, would be 1,239 days and not 1,260. You can do the math on this on your own to see because 354 days makes up a lunar year, which would make up year one, 354 to make up year two, 354 to make up year three, and then half of that, 177 for the half year, for three and a half years. So if you add these numbers, 
numbers up, you get a grand total of 1,239 days and not the 1,260. So that means that there was no lunar calendar that was being used during the time of scripture whatsoever, regardless if it starts on the full moon, regardless if it starts on the new moon, regardless if it starts on the crescent moon, it was not being used in scripture whatsoever it is not scriptural and we have this witness here too and brashith or genesis 114 where alua said let lights come to be in the expanse of the shamayim to separate the day from the night and let them so notice how it says them plural not just the moon itself but let them be for signs in appointed times other translations might say seasons and for days and for years Note once again where it says, let them be for signs, seasons, days, years. What is the them right here? It's talking about the sun, moon, and the stars, your two or more witnesses that we have and not just the moon itself. So what does this mean? This proves that the lunar calendar and lunar Shabbats was not used during this time and is not scriptural as we've just proven with the accounts in Hadassah, Esther, the account in Revelation, the flood account, and that the translators purposefully added the word moon for the phrase new moon instead of the correct phrase in the correct term new month and it also shows that a lunar solar calendar was used not the lunar calendar or the lunar Shabbat and we'll be talking more about that and how to determine when the month actually begins and when the months actually begin now I know some will try to use Psalms 104:19 to try to say and try to prove that oh this verse right here proves that the moon and the lunar calendar is valid because of this verse. However, we have to look at things in context and rightly divide the word. Yes, it says he made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows when to go down, but just as we've proven and just as the word says, we need two or more witnesses to establish every matter. And actually when you read this verse in context and when you actually look at it in context you see how this verse actually proves when days begin and that overall the day begins in the evening because some people only look at this first part to say oh he made the moon to mark the seasons or he made the moon for appointed times just as it says right here and it does use the word Yarak right here or Strong's H3394 so we know it is talking about the moon and this word right here which is Muad or Muadium to mean season or appointed time it does say that some people only use this first part to try to justify that without looking at the entire verse where the next part says, and the sun knows when to go down. Why does it say that? Because when the sun goes down, the moon comes up. So the moon marks what? A new season, which is what? A new day. When this verse right here proves that days overall, in fact, begin in the evening, and I know there's so many different doctrines on this, but like I said, I've done a video covering more of this about when the day begins. Also, we have Leviticus 23.32 about the Day of Atonement, which is the Torah, by the way, which also proves when it says from even unto even or from evening until the evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath, your Shabbat. And we know that the Day of Atonement is the Sabbath. So when some say that the Sabbath is from morning to evening. All right, but the Day of Atonement, according to Scripture itself, the Day of Atonement is a Sabbath, and Yahuwah, our Father, tells us that we are to observe it from evening to evening. Why would Yahuwah tell us to only observe the Day of Atonement, which is a Sabbath, by the way? Why would he tell us to only observe this one from evening to evening, but all the other Sabbaths, oh, just kidding, now observe those from morning to evening? It does doesn't make any sense. Yahuwah is not the author of confusion. But we know who the author of confusion is. Now again, this video is not coming against anyone who does use the lunar Sabbath or the lunar calendar, but rather we're getting some truth about these calendars and testing these spirits and exposing these lies because now the truth is being revealed. Now, when it comes to the lunar calendar in particular and the lunar Sabbath and how to observe the Sabbath, what ends up happening is that it's observed either every 7th, 14th, 21st or 28th of the month and that's how they get the Sabbath based on the new moon. Now some use it based on the full moon and both are not scriptural as we've just proven. However, some base it on the 1st, 8th, 
15th, 22nd, or 29th of the month, so already there's a difference there. And based on this calendar specifically, according to the Lunar Sabbath, the Sabbath is going to change when it comes to the Gregorian calendar every single month of the year. So in the Gregorian calendar, one month the Sabbath might be on, say, Monday, but then the next month it might change to Tuesday, and then the month after that it might change to Wednesday, and it keeps going and keeps going based on this calendar. Either way, this is a problem because we know the Sabbath cannot switch every single month, but according to the Lunar Sabbath, it does. Well, what's the problem with this? The problem is that this contradicts scripture because according to Yahuwah, according to the fourth commandment, the Sabbath is on a continual seventh day. And by the way, the moon was created on the fourth day of creation, according to Brashith, Genesis chapter one. So observing the Sabbath based on the moon alone without two witnesses, well, doing that, the problem and the issue there is the moon wasn't created until the fourth day of the week anyway. So there's no continual seventh day that way. And not only that, but as we've just proven and shown to you, the lunar Sabbath switches every month. So there's going to be within every month, there's going to be an eighth day added per month. So every single month, there's going to be eight or nine days throughout the week where the Sabbath will be observed every eighth or ninth day of the month. But according to scripture, the continual Sabbath is on a continual seven day cycle because we work every six days and on the seventh day we rest. Therefore, the lunar Sabbath is actually breaking the fourth commandment, is breaking the commandment that six days we work and the seventh day we rest. And this is a continual cycle. This continues. Yahuwah does not change. His word declares that he does not change. His word declares that he is the same. So his word does not change. So therefore, the Sabbath switching every single month and going on an eight or nine day count per month, well, that's breaking the fourth commandment because it's not being kept every seventh day. Even though we know planets do not exist, I just wanted to show you this picture right here. Now, another main argument that many lunar Shabbat keepers will try to use and try to say and justify is the main argument is that Sabbath cannot be on quote unquote Saturday because Saturday is Saturn day. But this argument is flawed because they try to say, well, then the Sabbath is kept on any other different day. So for example, the Sabbath might be kept on Monday for a month and then kept on the Gregorian Tuesday for for a month and so on. Well, if you actually look at it and according to the Lunar Sabbath, every single year it's going to be kept on Saturday anyway. Because according to their own calendar, according to the lunar calendar and the lunar Shabbat, based solely when the moon is nowhere recorded in scripture, but on one of the months every year, the Sabbath will be observed on Saturday, even in the lunar calendar, even in the lunar Shabbat. Not only that, but if you're only observing based on the moon, and it just so happens that the moon Sabbath, the lunar Shabbat, is say on a Tuesday, well, wouldn't you be honoring the deity of Tuesday that day, if it's on a Wednesday and you're observing Shabbat on a Wednesday, based on the lunar Shabbat, aren't you giving homage to Woden? If your Sabbath is on, say, Friday, and say you're basing it on the lunar calendar and the lunar Shabbat for one of your months is going to be on a Friday, aren't you giving homage to Frida too? So aren't you giving homage to all of these idols based on these different days? But last I checked, scripture says that it's on one day, the seventh day, and we know that according to creation is that it's always going to follow a continual seventh day cycle. It's always going to be on the seventh day. It doesn't matter that the fact that the Romans came in and added their own words and their own names because that's where these words come from of Roman influence. But like I said, even when it comes to the lunar Sabbath, according to the lunar Sabbath, one of the days during the month, one of the months, the Sabbath will be on Saturday based on this calendar throughout the year. This is just to show you that this argument is flawed indeed. Yahusha says that his yoke is easy, burden is light. There's too much adding and taking away, too much confusion when it comes to this calendar, too much confusion when it comes to the lunar Shabbat. Therefore, it is wrong, and as we've just proven, it is not scriptural.
Now we've gone over this in plenty of videos before, but the beast also known as Rome, they even tell you that the Sabbath day was indeed on so-called Saturday and was changed and replaced to Sunday, also known as the first day of the week. And we've gone over this in plenty of videos when it comes to the catechisms and the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic catechisms, and even right here in the converts catechism of Catholic doctrine, we read question, which is the Sabbath day? And the answer is of course, so-called Saturday day the seventh day and then it says why do we observe sunday instead of saturday and of course they tell you why because of the lord's day and then they try to justify by telling you that oh they observe it because the messiah was risen on the first day of the week and they give you those twisted translations of scripture but if you actually take a look at my video in the resurrection restored timeline that we did a couple of months ago you'll see that the correct term even in the greek is that the messiah himself was resurrected on a Sabbath, which makes perfect sense because he says that he is sovereign or master of the Sabbath day, according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. And we see that the translators, once again, they purposefully added that there. They purposefully added the phrase first day of the week when it comes to the resurrection account because they wanted to justify Sunday sun worship and changing the Sabbath language also proves the same thing because it's no surprise how the word sabbath in a ton of other different languages are synonymous with the word so-called saturday because in arabic it's asabt in armenian it's shabbat which means saturday by the way and you can see in all these different languages it means the exact same thing how the word sabbath is very similar to the word saturday here is another list right here where you can see them right here. Here's Arabic, Armenian, Bosnian, Bulgarian. This is the word right here in these respective languages that means Saturday. As you can see, the word Saturday in Armenian means Shabbat right here. The word Saturday in Arabic means Sab or Sabet. You can see right here, if you keep going, the word Sabbath in Georgian means Sabati. The word Sabbath in Latin means Sabatum. The word Sabbath or Saturday in Romanian means Sambata. The word Saturday in Portuguese means Sabado. And even when it comes to other languages too, such as Spanish, the word Saturday means Sabado. So we see how the word Sabbath is synonymous with so-called Saturday. And we know based on scripture, as we just saw, that days begin in evening. So yes, Friday evening to Saturday evening is the correct time to observe Sabbath. And that is the seventh day according to scripture itself. And I I've done a video on this even more. Now again, some try to say, oh, but that cannot be the Sabbath because that's when the Jewish people observe the Sabbath. But we have to understand and remember the Jewish people got it from who? The Jewish people got it from our ancestors who observed Sabbath from Friday to Saturday, which is why they do it, just like the Muslims. In the Muslim culture, Muslims do not eat pork. So should we say, oh, do not eat pork because the Muslims do not eat pork? No, the Muslims got that from the Yaudium, the Hebrew culture, just like the Jewish. But now we're going to go over calendar origins and we're going to talk more about the lunar calendar and where it actually comes from. Because as we've just proven mathematically, linguistically, and scripturally, we've just proven in this video that the people of old and that the ancient people in scripture did not use a lunar calendar, nor did they go based on the lunar calendar for feast days and for Shabbats. And later on in the video to come, we're going to show you the calendar that they did use, and we're going to use that calendar with scripture also and prove it with scripture. But now we're going to talk about calendar origins, and we're going to show you the Jewish calendar, the Islamic calendar, and also their roots from the Babylonian calendar, and show you and prove to you also how the lunar calendar and lunar Shabbat is actually synonymous with the Babylonian calendar, because they show you here at Wikipedia that the Hebrew calendar or the Jewish calendar, and it's really just the Jewish calendar because the Yaudium Hebrew calendar is nothing like this one. They tell you that it's a lunar solar calendar, but they're actually lying because they go based on the moon, and we know that they're the synagogues of Satan and that they do lie. So for this video, I'm going to refer to it as the Jewish calendar because that's what it is. But the Jewish calendar is the product of evolution, including what? A Babylonian influence. 
Because notice how in the Jewish calendar, it's 11 days shorter than the solar year, meaning it's 354 days, meaning it's not a lunar solar calendar. It's a lunar calendar because they go based on 354 days. So what they have to do then to add up to the solar year, they have to have a 19 year metonic cycle to bring it in line with the solar year with an addition of an intercalary month every two or three years for a total of seven times times per 19 years. What that means is they have to add an additional 13th month every two or three years, which also is not scriptural because that means in the Jewish calendar, one of their years, they're going to have 13 months in it. And that is not scriptural either. But again, notice how the Jewish calendar comes from what? Babylonian influence. Not only that, but they go based on the new moon. And every time they cite a new moon, that claims that that begins the new month. And notice how their calendar began around September 20th of 2017, this past year. Now, when you go to the Islamic calendar, you notice that both the Jewish calendar and the Islamic calendars are pretty much almost the same thing because the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar consisting of 12 months in a year of 354 or 355 days just like the jewish calendar it's no different it's the exact same thing and also note how this past year this calendar also started around september 20th september 21st 2017 so both of these calendars started around the exact same time and just like the Jewish calendar, the Islamic calendar uses the moon and cites the new moon as the new month for the Islamic calendar. But doesn't the word of our father Yahuwah tell us not to learn the way of the heathen? and learn not the way of the heathen doesn't it say that we are not to follow their customs and traditions and not to give heed to jewish fables and traditions so you see right here, the Islamic calendar is based on 354 or 355 days to mark their year. And it started around the fall time, around September 20th of 2017, September 21st of 2017, just like the Jewish calendar. It's the same thing, 11 days shorter than the solar year. The solar year is 365, subtract 11 from that, and you get 354. And it started around the exact same time as the Islamic calendar, again, learn not the way of the heathen. And again, just as we've proven, the moon and the lunar calendar is not scriptural. The people of scripture did not use these calendars. But where do these calendars that both the Jewish and the Muslims use, where did these calendars come from? They come from Babylon, just like the language of the Jewish people, just like they're speaking Babylonian Yiddish. And we've gone over this in our Hebrew 101 video because no, they're not speaking Hebrew. And no, they're not speaking the Yaudiath Hebrew language of the the scriptures, but they're actually speaking Babylonian Aramaic and influences from Babylon, the Babylonian language, just like they're using and adopting the Babylonian calendar. Wow, nothing new under the sun. How many thousands of years later and nothing has changed? Because now we're here at Wikipedia and it says the Babylonian calendar, they claim it's lunar solar, but it's just lunar because it says years consisted of 12 lunar months, each beginning when a new crescent moon was first sighted low on the western horizon at sundown plus an intercalary month inserted as needed by decree. This is no different than the Jewish calendar. The only difference is that with the Jewish calendar, they start their new month based on the new moon. Well, with the Babylonian calendar, they started their month with the new crescent moon, and they also had intercalary months too. So they also had to insert 13 months, just like the Jewish calendar, nothing different whatsoever. Another thing that they did, which the Jewish people do too, is that they have names for their months also, which is also not scriptural because the only one that has a name for it in the Yaudium or the Hebrew language is the month of Abib. That's the only one that's named and named in scripture when it comes to the months, but all the other months, they have numbers to them and they are numbered from one through 12. All of these Hebrew equivalent names are Jewish influenced in what? Adding and taking away because you see 
right here, here is the month name that they have. And mind you, it comes from what? It comes from Babylon. It comes from Babylonian deities, as you can see right here, giving homage to these deities, just like they do with the Jewish. And you see the quote unquote, so-called Hebrew equivalent, when really it's the Jewish equivalent. And note how month four in the Jewish calendar is called Tammuz. Well, who is Tammuz? The son of Nimrod. Who is that? It's based on a pagan deity, and we're not even to even say these words or have them come out of our lips according to the Torah itself. So do you see how they changed and twisted everything? We also have to note how throughout forced captivity, such as Babylon, Assyria, Greece, and Rome, the ancient Yaudium or Hebrew people were forced to adopt the pagan practices of their enemies, including their enemies' calendars, resulting in the moon or lunar ones that we see today, giving homage to pagan lunar moon deities and deities period, as you see with the Babylonian captivity and the Babylonian calendar. So what this means is that when the people of the scriptures, when they were forced into captivity throughout these other nations, Babylon included, they had to adopt the customs and the culture of their oppressors, including Babylon, including their calendar, as you see right here. And if you read the book of Maccabees, even during the Greek captivity, if anyone observed the Torah back then, they were then killed because of it. And there were decrees in place where anyone who observed the Torah during that time or anyone who kept circumcision, anyone who kept to the dietary laws during Grecian captivity had to have been killed if they did not adopt the Greek customs and the pagan Greek cultures. It was no different with Babylon and the calendars also as we see. But this is just showing you how the lunar calendar was not only adopted from the Babylonian calendar, but is also alive and well today being utilized by both the Jewish and the Muslims. And like scripture tells us, we are not to learn the way of the heathen. We are not to follow their customs and traditions. Not only that, but the beast would do what? Think to change times and laws. And if you actually look at the Roman calendar and its history and origin, you'll see other similarities with this also and note here also in the Babylonian calendar they also have an intercalary 13th month also again not scriptural just as they named their months after pagan deities again not scriptural either Again, all of this adding and taking away. But what I found very interesting and suspicious indeed about this too, now I know it's Wikipedia, but how it says right here, based on the days that counting from the new moon, the Babylonians celebrated every seventh day as a quote unquote holy day, also called an evil day, meaning suitable for prohibited activities. On these days, officials were prohibited from various activities and common men were forbidden to quote, make a wish. And at least the 28th was known as a rest day. Now notice how it says on each of them, so each of the seventh days based on the new moon, based on the Babylonians, offerings were made to a different idol, apparently at nightfall to avoid the prohibitions. So they offer to these idols on the seventh, they offer to these idols on the 14th, these idols right here on the 21st, and these idols on the 28th. But doesn't that sound just like the lunar Sabbath on the 7th, 14th, 21st, and the 28th. Very interesting and suspicious indeed how it sounds just like the lunar Sabbath and when they're kept. It says here, tablets from the 6th century BC reigns of Cyrus the Great and Cambyses the Second indicate these dates were sometimes approximate. The lunation of 29 or 30 days basically contained three seven-day weeks and a final week of eight or nine days inclusive, breaking the continuous seven-day cycle. Sound Sounds just like the lunar Sabbath. Again, this is once again showing you that the lunar calendar and the lunar Sabbath has nothing to do with scripture, but actually has pagan Babylonian origins and roots. So then if we've just proven this and we've just proven scripturally that the lunar calendar and the lunar Shabbat is not scriptural and is not the calendar that was used in ancient times, well then what is the calendar that was used?
And now we're going to go over extra biblical or also known as extra scriptural resources because there's a reason they took all of this stuff out. And we're going to be looking at accounts and jubilees in the book of Enoch. And if you already have not, please take a look at my Enoch video and why they removed the book of Enoch because I'm going to prove to you in this video the legitimacy of the book of Enoch and how the book of Enoch was also included with the Dead Sea Scrolls along with the Torah, Psalms, and other books in scripture. And that there's an agenda they're trying to hide this stuff from you and hide the true calendar from you not anymore because we're here in Ubalium or jubilees chapter 2 verse 9 through 10 where it says and alua appointed the sun to be a great sign for the arts or on the earth for days and for shabbats and for months and for feasts and for years and for shabbats of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years and it divided the light from the darkness and for prosperity Prosperity, that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. Remember how we read in the book of Revelation and also in Hadassah or the book of Esther about a calendar being 360 days, but we're going to look more into that because Jubilees tells us more, especially in chapter 6, but we're going to be focusing specifically on two verses, verses 22 through 23. It says here, for I've written in the book of the first law, and this is a messenger speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, and that which I have written for thee, that thou should celebrate it in its season, one day in the year, and I explain to thee its offerings that the children of Yasharal should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. And on the new month, now some versions and translations are going to say new moon, but as we've gone over, the correct phrase is new month. On the new month of the first month, and on the new month of the fourth month, and on the new month of the seventh month, and on the new month of the 10th month are the days of remembrance and the days of the seasons and the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. So we see right here, according to this verse, that there are 360 days in this calendar, plus the four days of remembrance regarding the flood account corresponding with the seasons. And you'll see how this represents and correlates with the flood account for a total of 364 days. Days. And you'll see how each of these days relates to the flood account and how something happened on the flood account for each of these days. Now, if you read Jubilee 6 to its entirety, you'll see how each of these four days relates to the flood account. But it's interesting because it also corresponds with the seasons. And we know Genesis Brashith 1.14 talks about the seasons, how it's appointed for what? For signs and for seasons. Because month one, day one of the calendar is the first day of spring. So sometime around the spring equinox, month four, day one or four one is the first day of summer. Month seven, day one is the first day of fall, also known as the Feast of Trumpets. And then month 10, day one is the first day of winter and how these are the days of remembrance. There are four of them, each one corresponding with the first day of each of the four seasons because there are four seasons. So what that means in this calendar is that it's 52 weeks per year which also means there are 52 Shabbats per year. And we know that the Shabbat is always on the seventh day. So it's always from Friday evening to Saturday evening as we know it in the Gregorian calendar. That does not change. And we're going to be talking more about that. There are four seasons and it relates to the season, spring, summer, fall and winter each of the seasons has 91 days in it or 13 weeks because we know there are four of them so 91 times 4 is 364 for a total of 364 days in a year now i know some of you might be wondering well how can there be 364 days if in the gregorian calendar there are 365 and with the leap year sometimes 366 so how does that calendar relate and correspond to that we'll be talking about that later on in in the video. But for now, here are more witnesses that prove that there are 364 days in the year in this calendar, and we'll also be taking a look at the book of Enoch also. But as you can see right here in Ubalim, Jubilees chapter 6, verses 32 through 38, I actually read these passages before, and we're going to read them again, where it says, And command thou the children of Yasharal that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 
364 days and these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. Verse 33 says, but if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances and the children of Yasharal will forget and will not find the paths of the years and will forget the new months and seasons and Shabbats and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years for I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee and it is not of my own devising for the book lies written before me and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles or other nations after their error and after their ignorance such as the lunar calendar and the lunar Shabbats because then it says verse 36 for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year 10 days too soon for this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day of feast day and they will confound all the days the kadash are made apart with the unclean and the unclean day with the made apart for they will go wrong as to the months and sabbaths and feasts and jubilees for this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them for after thy death thy children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 364 days only and for this reason they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and sabbaths and festivals and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh well has that happened today yes it has has all of this come to pass yes it has as and that's what this channel is dedicated to doing, dedicated to restoring the ancient calendar, dedicated to restoring the feast and when they actually are, as you're going to see and find out right now. And where do we find the ancient calendar? In the book of Enoch, as I've gone over in my Enoch video. Now, there are some out there who are erroneously saying that, oh, the book of Enoch is not scripture and that it was not included with the canon because it's not scripture to begin with. I'm here to tell you that that is witchcraft because, yes, it was included with original canons. It was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. And what you're looking at right now is the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and their books and canons. And by the way, the Ethiopian scriptures are 800 years older than the King James Version. And you'll see that they had 81 books in their canon. And what were some of the books they also had in their canon? Jubilees and the Book of Enoch was in their canon also. There was also the Aramaic Enoch scroll that was also found and was a non-published complete copy of the Book of Enoch that was found in Qumran Cave 11. Here we are at the Dead Sea Scrolls website, and guess what one of the scrolls was founded there? Well, the Book of Enoch scroll was founded along with Genesis, the Ten Commandments, the Psalms, the Minor Prophets, and Enoch also, and here is the Enoch scroll. We also see Enoch being quoted in the scripture itself in Brashia through Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. So we even see Enoch even being quoted in the Torah too. Here is another Enoch scroll that was founded in 4Q201, referenced from Oxford University as of 1976. We see Enoch once again in Brashith Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. So we have this witness right here in the Thura, the Torah, and we have the Qumran witness itself, also the Enoch scroll itself, proving that it was in fact scripture, and also proving that during the ancient time of scripture, the prophets and people in scripture actually quote from the Book of Enoch.
So to say that this book is not scripture with no evidence to back it up is a form of witchcraft because there's a whole lot of truth in the book of Enoch, including the calendar itself. Also, there are plenty of verses where even the Messiah also quotes from the book of Enoch too, because we know that during the time of the Messiah and during the time of the so-called New Testament, the so-called New Testament had yet to be written. So they had books such as Enoch, they had books such as the Torah, the Tanakh, the prophets, prophets and the writings, those were the books they had. But here is a non-exhaustive list of some verses taken from the book, the book of Enoch the prophet, that was originally published as of 1883. You see that the book of Yahuda, commonly known as the book of Jude, you see that Jude even quotes from Enoch, and we've gone over this in my video where it says, Behold, Yahua cometh with ten thousands of his Kadash ones, or saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are wicked among them of all their wicked deeds which they have wickedly committed and of all their hard speeches which wicked sinners have spoken against them this comes directly from the book of enoch which is quoted where it says behold he comes with ten thousands of his kadash ones to execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and reprove all the carnal for everything which the wicked and the wicked have done and committed against him and it also quotes from luke and you can see here it quotes in the book of enoch it also quotes from the book of james the book of Luke right here. And even in the book of Mathath, Yahu, Matthew 19, 28, where Yahusha says, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, where the book of Enoch also says, I will place each of them on the throne of esteem. And the list just goes on and on. But this is giving you an idea that yes, even the scripture quotes from the book of Enoch itself. So to say that the book of Enoch is not scriptural is just a form of witchcraft. The section of this book also contains a 364-day calendar, also known as the Enoch calendar, that's described in one year, with the 30-30-31 count calendrical system for months 1, 2, and 3, with months beginning at the spring, and so on, all the way up until around the 12th month. Such a calendar system also matches that of the calendars that's described and talked about in the Qumran fragments 4Q208 all the way up until 4Q211, and it's also described in the Book of Jubilees, primarily Jubilees chapter 6. And you can see on this calendar here, you get 3030, and then 31, with the 31st day occurring on each of the solstices, as you can see here, corresponding with each of the four seasons of the year. Of course, this is contrary to the Babylonian-influenced lunar calendar that's only 354 days in a year with an additional 13th month that has to be added extra per the Metonic 19-year cycle. But this calendar here actually agrees with what Genesis 1.14 says, where it talks about the signs and the luminaries being used for signs and seasons also. And now we'll be reading from Enoch chapter 72, also known as Kanuk in the Yaudium, the Hebrew language. And we're also going to show you how this book aligns perfectly with the menorah also. And we're going to be showing you how it relates and corresponds with the different gates and the portals and how it corresponds with the 12 months. So now we're here in Kanuk, Enoch chapter 72. The book of the courses of the lights of the Shamayim or heavens, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Urayal, the Kadash messenger, who was with me, who is their guide, showed me, and he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto everlasting, till the new creation is accomplished which endures till everlasting. And this is the first law of the lights, the light, the sun has its rising in the eastern portals of the Shamayim or heavens, and it's going down in the western portals of the Shamayim. Verse 3, And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun goes down, and the moon rises and goes down in these portals, and the leaders of the stars, and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order, also many windows to the right and left of these portals. 
And first there goes forth the great light named the sun, and its circumference is like the circumference of the Shamayim, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. Verse 5. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the Shamayim and returns to the north in order to reach the east, and is so guided that he comes to the portal and shines in the face of the Shamayim. And this way he goes in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings from which proceed a flame when they are open in their season. When the sun rises in the Shamim, he goes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession and goes down exactly in the fourth portal in the west of the Shamim. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day, the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the night amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. Verse 11, And the sun rises from that fourth portal and goes down in the fifth, and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings, and rises from it and goes down in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to eleven parts, and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises and goes down in the sixth portal thirty-one mornings on account of its sign. On that day the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double the night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer. And the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it and goes down 30 mornings. And when 30 mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes seven parts in the night seven. Verse 17. And the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings and goes down in the west again in the fifth western portal. On that day the day decreases by two parts and amounts to ten parts in the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and goes down in the fifth portal of the west and rises in the fourth portal for thirty-one mornings on account of its sign and goes down in the west. On that day the day is equalized with the night, and the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal and goes down in the west, and returns to the east and rises thirty mornings in the third portal, and goes down in the west in the third portal. And on that day the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day shorter than day till the thirtieth morning, and the night amounts exactly to ten parts, and the day to eight parts. And the sun rises from that third portal, and goes down in the third portal in the west, and returns to the east, and for thirty mornings rises in the second portal in the east, in the same way goes down in the second portal in the west of the Shamayim. Verse 24. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from that second portal and goes down in the west in the second portal and returns to the east into the first portal for thirty-one mornings and goes down in the first portal in the west of the Shamayim. And on that day the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day and the night amounts exactly to twelve parts and the day to six. And the sun has traversed the divisions of its orbit and turns again on those divisions of its orbit and enters that portal thirty mornings and goes down also in the west opposite to it. And on that night the night has decreased in length by a ninth part and the night has become eleven parts in the day seven parts. And the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east and returns on those its divisions of its orbit for thirty mornings rising and going down. Verse 30. And on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to ten parts and the day to eight. And on that day the sun rises from that portal and goes down in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for thirty-one mornings and goes down in the west of the Shamayim. On that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to its days three hundred and sixty-four and the length of the day and of the night 
and the shortness of the day and of the night arise. Through the course of the sun they are separated, verse 34, so it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter, and this is the law and the course of the sun and its return as often as he returns sixty times and rises the great light which is named the sun forever and ever. And that which rises is the great light and is so named according to its appearance, according as Yahuwah commanded. Verse 37, And he rises so he goes down and does not decrease and does not rest, but runs day and night, and its light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon, but as regards size, they are both equal. So now we just looked at Enoch chapter 72, and here's another graph and chart that looks at the same thing that says, the book of the courses of the heavenly luminaries, chapter 72, the sun, as we just read, and we're going to be going even in more detail to determine when the actual new year and when the new month, the first month begins, because as we just read, there are a total of 12 months. But the question still remains, how do we determine when the new year is? Is it during the spring equinox or the spring equilux? We're going to go over that also, but this just gives you an idea. As you can see right here, the month of Abib, which is commonly in the spring, and we know that Yaudium Hebrew New Year's begin in the spring. So Abib is at portal or gate four, as you can see right here. The second month is at portal five, and then the third month is at portal six, which leads up to the summer solstice and then from summer to autumn the fourth month is in portal six right here so the sun travels back this way then at the fifth month it's in portal five back to portal four and then in time for the equinox and then during the seventh month so during the month of trumpets atonement and tabernacles which is sometime in the fall then the sun is in portal three which is right here and then keeps going to portals two to portal one all the way until the winter solstice and then back up to portals one two and three for the vernal equinox which is sometime around the new year and i'll be sure to link this in the description box below so you can take a look at this on your own time this is from the east and this is from the west now here are some notes on this as you can see right here the numbers in parentheses represent the proportion of day to night at the boundary of the designated portal the sun rises in the eastern portals over here and goes down in the western portals over here so it goes from the east all the way until the west this arrangement is applicable north of the equator so the equator is facing north a year consists of 364 days as we've gone over including 12 30 day months as we we've gone over plus four intercalary days to account for what the equinoxes and the solstices or the four seasons spring summer fall and winter and then the compass points were estimated based on Jerusalem not measured to scale now the Enoch calendar is also known as the Qumran calendar and the reason that this is the case is because there are about 20 different texts from the Qumran community which deal with the 364 day solar calendar also known as the Luni solar calendar and we'll also be taking a look at the priestly calendar too how this also relates to it but if you look at the actual structure of the calendar this is what the structure says now this is the structure of the calendar and I've highlighted this one Saturday so called also known as the Shabbat and there's a reason I have that highlighted but it says here the year is made up of 12 months grouped in quarters each quarter contains three months two of 30 days and one of 31 days i.e. 91 days or 13 weeks each quarter and the quarter represents the seasons as we've just gone over the following table shows a quarter of the year the day names are provided only only to facilitate of understanding. Other than the weekly Sabbath, the other days were merely numbered in the calendrical text, as in they did not have any type of names to them. The year in each of its quarters starts on the same day, the fourth day of the week, i.e. Wednesday, so called. This was the day when the sun was created in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. And that's another hint of how we begin the calendar, because the calendar day one of month one of a bee will all Always begin on the fourth day of the week also known as Wednesday the reason why this is the case is because that's when the Sun was created according to Brashith Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through
through 18. So from that point, then we say, all right, the new year, whenever the new year is around the time of the spring equinox, that day one is always going to be the fourth day of the regular week. And then if you keep going, the fourth day of the first month is going to be your Shabbat. So for example, let's do this together. If we have month one in the month of Abib, there are four Shabbats. The Shabbat is going to be on the fourth day of the first month, the 11th day of the first month, the 18th day of the first month, and the 25th day of the first month, along with the fourth month, seventh month, and 10th month. Now, if you go to the second month, you'll have Shabbat on the second day of the second month, the ninth day of the second month, the 16th day of the second month, the 23rd day of the second month, and then the 30th day of the second month. And then if you go to the third month, if we keep going on the seven day cycle, then you'll have Shabbat on the seventh day of the third month, the 14th day of the third month, the 21st day of the third month, and then the 28th day of the third month. And then the cycle repeats. So from 328, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to get four, four, and it just keeps going all the way. So when you get to 1228, you get 1229, 1230, 1231, and then you get the new year, one, 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 two, one, three, and then one, four for your Sabbath. And the cycle just keeps repeating and keeps going. Now, as we've gone over and talked about in some of our videos, we've actually talked about how this calendar agrees with scripture too, because we've talked about in our video, how in the restored resurrection timeline, how the Messiah, Yahusha, he died around Passover. Yahusha, our Messiah, died on Passover, which would have been that Tuesday or the third day of the week, as it's commonly known, on 114. So we have 114, which is Passover. This is the day that Yahusha died. We know he was in the grave for three days and three nights. So the three days is 115, 116, and 117. And by the way, if you would like to learn more about this, please take a look at my video, The Restored Resurrection Timeline. It's also scriptures often ignored, which I'll link in the description box below. So he was in the grave during unleavened bread because unleavened bread begins the 15th day of the first month. So that means Yahusha was in the grave for three days and three nights. So that was the first three days of unleavened bread. And then he was resurrected. He was resurrected on 118, which was a Shabbat. And that's what the Greek actually says in the restored text, that on one of the Shabbats is when Mary and Mary Magdalene went to go see him. And he was not there in the grave anymore, but he was resurrected. And this is the resurrection Shabbat on the 18th of Abib, which is a Shabbat which agrees with this calendar. Like I said, if you would like to learn more about this or if you would like more information about this, please pause this video and watch the Restored Timeline and the Restored Resurrection Timeline to get a better understanding. But again, we need two or more witnesses to establish every matter because we see that this calendar is actually used in the restored resurrection timeline. We see that, but we also see, and there's actual scriptural proof, that one of these Shabbats actually agrees with the account in scripture in the Torah itself, and that's on the second month, on the 23rd day of the month being Shabbat. We actually see that being Shabbat in scripture, and I'm going to prove that to you right now. Here we are in Bamadabar or Numbers chapter 10. Now what I've done is quoted specifically from verses 11 and verse 33. Now if you would like to take a look at the chapter to its entirety for more context, please feel free to do so. But as you can see right here, there's a reason I've done this. You're going to see why. Because verse 11 says, and it came to be on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the dwelling place of the witness. So they went out from the mountain of Yahua on a journey of three days. And the Ark of the Covenant of Yahua went before them for the three days journey to seek out a resting place for them. 
So when we look at these dates in particular, when it comes to this account in Numbers chapter 10, we see that it was a three days journey, just as it says that day one was on the second month of the 20th day. So we see it was on 220 on the 20th day of the second month, as it says right here in verse 11, that was day one. The 21st day of the second month or 221 was then day two. And then the 22nd day of the second month was day three. And we see in verse 33 that it it was a three-day journey. Now notice how afterwards they had to seek out a resting place. Why did they need to seek out a resting place after the three-day journey? Because then the next day would have been a Shabbat. That's why they were looking for a resting place. That means that the 23rd day of the second month was in fact a Shabbat, which is why they sought out the resting place. This agrees with what we just read here and as we just saw in the Enoch calendar and the structure of the calendar, how we have month two right here, day 23 being a Shabbat right there, where the account that we just read in Numbers chapter 10 also agrees with this calendar too. And in case you would like to see it again, and we'll go over it again, how the 20th day of the second month is when they went to journey, as you can see right here, and it took them three days to journey according to Numbers chapter 10. Well, we know the 20th day of the second month is day one. The 21st would have been day two. The 22nd would have been day three of the second month, which means the 23rd day of the second month, or 223, is the Shabbat, which is why they went for a resting place and which is why they sought out a resting place and it agrees with the Enoch calendar. This is not the only place that we see 2.23 or the 23rd day of the second month being a Shabbat because we have another witness and that's the manna account in Shemuth or Exodus chapter 16. Now you can read the entire chapter to get more context, but I've taken a few verses so you can actually see what it is. It says here, and they went out from Ayalam or commonly known as Elam and all the congregation of the children of Yasharal came to the wilderness of Sayan or Sin, which is between between Ayalam and Sayanya or Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they're going out of the land of Matsariam or Egypt. Now, according to the Enoch calendar, as we just looked at the chart, 215 or the 15th day of the second month is the day before Shabbat, and Shabbat is on 216, which is a week before 223 in this calendar. Now, if we jump down to verse 4, it says, And Yahuwah said to Masha, See, I am raised raining bread from the heavens or the Shamayim for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day in order to try them, whether they walk in my Thura or Torah or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So it was on the 15th day of the second month that the children of Yasharal grumbled and they groaned and they whined about having no food and wanted some food. So then Yahuwah said, and that's when Yahuwah gave the command about the manna and that it would begin on day one and that it would rain manna for six days and it would rain twice as much on the sixth day. However, when you look at the restored count of this, the manna count actually began on 217, on the 17th day of the second month, which ironically enough is also also, when the flood account, when the rain started, which is after Shabbat, the day after Shabbat, so day one would place us at 217, day two of the man account would be 218, day three would be 219, day four would be 220, day five, 221. Day 6, 222, and this is the day, the 22nd day of the second month, when it rained twice as much manna according to Exodus 16, 5 and Exodus 16, 22. And then day 7, the Shabbat, was on 223, the 23rd day of the second month, when there was no manna at all according to Exodus 16, verses 23 through 30. So once again, another witness in Scripture that 223, the 23rd day of the second month, is in fact the Shabbat according to this account and according to the account in Numbers chapter 10 also agreeing with the Enoch calendar along with the resurrection account also. And like I said, if you would like to learn more about the resurrection account also in the restored timeline of the resurrection and how it also agrees with the Enoch calendar, please take a look at my resurrection timeline video linked in the description box below.
Now, another question that pops up a lot is when does the calendar begin? Because now that we've gone over the calendar and have an idea of the Enoch calendar and the 364 days, we know that it begins sometime around the spring because that's when the month of Abib is. But do we start it based on the equinox or the equilux? Well, let's find out because now we're here at the etymology for the word equinox. And as you can see right here, the etymology, it comes from Old French and from Mid evil Latin and it says from equal and night so the word actually means equal night or the English even night for the word equinox now the word equilux means a day in which the durations of light and darkness are equal so the word equilux is a period where it's light for 12 hours and dark for 12 hours contrasted with an equinox where they may differ slightly due the angular size of the Sun and atmospheric refraction this right here from time and day gives you more about the equal day and night and tells more about the equilux and right here around the world this gives you the dates of when the equilux actually is now again this is according to the equilux which means that it's day for 12 hours and exactly night for 12 hours so that means if you're on a latitude of 60 degrees north your equilux where it's exactly 12 hours worth a day and 12 hours worth a night would be on March 18th and September 25th. And we know it happens twice in the year. However, if you get closer to the equator, if you go five degrees north, the equilux would be on February 24th and October 17th. So this proves right here when it comes to the equinox and equilux that it cannot be the equilux and the Enoch calendar does not begin on the equilux simply because because the equilux is different in every region. We need that one defining moment where everything is equal and the word equinox means equal night because as you see right here in this chart, some regions experience the equilux as early as February and some experience it as late as April in the spring. However, some experience it as early as August in the fall time and some as late as October. So if you were to observe the Enoch calendar according to the equilux you would have to factor these things in too and you'd have to note that not every location that observes the equilux observes at the exact same time however when it comes to the equinox which is observed around March 20th or March 21st when it comes to the vernal or spring equinox every single region every single place on the world observes it at the exact same time and that's the defining moment of a around the time of the new year the equinox is also scriptural because the equinox also corresponds and correlates with the season or the muadium and we know there are four seasons and the equinox corresponds to each of the seasons to the fall season and to the spring season and we know that the year begins sometime in the spring and the word season in the Yaudium or the Hebrew language means muad, muad right here, which means meeting. It can also mean appointed time, appointed place, or an appointed meeting. It can also mean an appointed assembly too. And so we know that this calendar is based on seasons and corresponds with the equinox. That is how we're able to determine when the new year actually is. And once we determine our new year, and once we determine when day one is, and I'm going to show you how in just a moment, then we keep going on our count for 364 based on the 30, 30, 31 count. Now here are just some things to keep in mind about this calendar and how it functions. Now remember this, Yahuwah does not change, meaning this calendar is going to be the same every single time, every single year. So these rules always apply every single year. So what this means in the bullet points of this calendar is that the calendar will start each year on the fourth day. So every fourth day of the year is when the calendar begins, so-called Wednesday. Every year 
year must have 364 days. And we know that this is the case in order to keep Shabbat on Saturday, because with this calendar, the Sabbath is always going to be on the seventh day from Friday evening to Saturday evening. The Sabbath will not switch every month. The Sabbath will not switch every year, but it will stay the same every single year. The start day of every year must be within five days of the spring equinox, modern sundial dates of March 20th through the 21st. There are leap weeks of seven days that can be only added on years when the full moon coincides with the spring equinox. And we're going to be talking about that. And the moon is actually how you determine the leap week because we'd have to add one in order to correlate and to coincide with the Gregorian calendar of 365 days and sometimes 366. And like I said, we'll be talking more about that. But it says here, when considering full moon years for adding the seven days, they can only be in additions of five, six, or eight years and must be on full moon years without exception. Yahuwah's calendar dates of the feast, high Sabbaths, and seven day Shabbats must remain exactly the same every year for eternity. And we must never break the seventh day cycle established at creation. What that means is that, yes, our Sabbath is always going to be on the seventh day. It's always going to be from Friday evening to Saturday evening. This is never going to change. Yahuwah does not change. And yes, even though they've given Roman Gregorian names for these dates, it's still the seventh day of rest. And then it says here, all 12 months must have 30 days for a total of 360 with four or intercalary days added at the end of each of the four seasons. So like we said, the 30, 30, and the 31, which are the four days of remembrance. Now, in case you already have not seen it or are not familiar with it, this is the solar calendar based upon calendrical documents 4Q320 and 4Q321. And this has to do with the Qumran documents found in the Qumran caves, according to the Essenes. Now, you're going to see in our calendar there are a few differences, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment to come. But you see right here how it lists Abib. Right here is the first month, the second month, and then the third month. And it lists right here the days in the corresponding order. So the first day all the way up until the Sabbath. And as you can see right here, the Shabbats or the Sabbaths are listed in red. It goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12. And as you can see right here, the only months that have 31 days are the ones right here. And the third month right here, that has to represent the summer solstice. And then the sixth month, which is the autumn equinox right here. And then right here towards 931 or the 31st day of the ninth month, which is around the winter solstice. And then 1231 or day 364, which is around the time of the vernal equinox. And again, please keep in mind that the new year, that the Hebrew Yaudium new year is sometime around the vernal equinox around March 20th, 21st in that area. It is not on January 1st. Now, again, this calendar is based on how the Essenes did it. But as you can see right here, here's the 14th of Abib or the 14th of the first month. And notice how it's always on the third day of the week or from Monday evening to Tuesday evening, as it's commonly known today. This is when Pasach or Passover is. And then right after that, the 15th through the 21st is unleavened bread. Now, in this calendar here, and again, this is also an agricultural calendar, and the Essenes could have been doing this based on agriculture. Culture, but here they have the 26th listed as first fruits, but in our restored calendar, we have it as the 19th. And the reason we have it as the 19th is because the 19th corresponds with our Mashayak Yahusha, who was resurrected on the Sabbath in order to become the first fruits. They also list the 14th of the second month right here as the second Passover. And you can learn more about that in Numbers chapter 9, verses 10 through 14. Now here in this calendar, they have 50 days as the Feast of Weeks. Now I've done a video covering the Feast of Weeks or commonly known as Pentecost. I've covered this more in detail and I've shown you even with scripture how there are actually two counts. So if you actually do the seven Shabbat counts, so seven Shabbats plus 50 days 
and you can learn more about this in the video linked in the description box below you'll arrive at Pentecost sometime in the fourth month actually you'll arrive towards 426 and like I said when you look at the calendar that we're doing for this year and even next year you'll actually see that but if you would like to learn more about that you definitely can in our video linked in the description box below they also have right here the seventh month the first of the seventh month which is the fourth day of the week so commonly known as Wednesday as the Feast of Trumpets now notice right here how they have 710 the Day of Atonement the Day of Atonement 710 or the tenth day of the seventh month as the sixth day of the week so commonly known as Friday and then the 15th of the seventh month which is the first day of Tabernacles is also on a so-called Wednesday all the way until the 22nd which is the last great day that's also on a so-called Wednesday now they also give the cycle of priestly divisions from calendrical documents 4Q320 and 4Q321 and they divide the year into six years because the seventh year is the sabbatical year and this is where the moon comes in also because just like it uses the sun in order to determine the 364 days well the moon in the lunar phase also helps us establish when the priestly year actually is as you can see it's divided into the divisions and as you can see right here here are the lunar phases fm represents the full moon right there and as you can see every month during the full moon that lets you know the different phases it lets you know the different weeks when it starts and when it ends and this just gives you a better idea of it like I said I'll link this in the description box below this gives you your two of six now the full moon is what helps us decide the priestly divisions and what year it actually is depending on when the full moon actually is and we're going to be talking more about that when it comes to the additional week that has to be added in order to keep the seven day cycle going now because of Rome and because of all of the adding and the taking away that's been done and in order to resynchronize with the 365 days and sometimes 366 days on the calendar of the Gregorian calendar this is how we're able to do it now here is a schematic explanation of this in so-called March in red it's the day of the entry of the Sun and the large gate named today as the equinox and we know on the equinox according to the book of Enoch this is the 364th day if the fourth day falls on March 20th the day of the equinox so we stay on 320 as the first day of the first month of the year but the following year the fourth day Day, will then move to March 19th and there will be out of the large gate so then it's the signal to add seven days and this cycle keeps going the reason this happens is because we have to have seven days in order to keep our Shabbat in sync with seven days so for example if the fourth day falls on March 19th and I'll be showing you a graphic of this in a moment the year will begin Wednesday March 26th so we'll go from here to here for an addition of one week that must be made because the fourth day must always follow the entry of the sun in the large gate or the equinox and the next year after 364 days the fourth day falls on March 25th no need to resynchronize so it goes from here to here as you can see and after that 364 days the fourth day will fall on the 23rd no need to resynchronize and it will fall on the 23rd instead of the 24th because of a leap year as you can see right here so to go from the 25th to the 23rd and then next year after 364 64 the fourth day will fall on the 22nd no need to resynchronize there so it goes from the 23rd to the 22nd as you can see right here and then it'll go to the 21st after 364 days so after a following year and as you can see it keeps going and then the cycle starts over and I'm going to show you a practical application of that right now and then following that because one of the years it goes from the 20th through the 18th then it goes back to the 25th right here it's time to add seven days because they're behind on the large gate and we must always start either on the large gate or in the week following the passage of the sun in the large gate and this is the resynchronization that must happen in order to keep the cycle going and to keep the 364 day cycle going and the Shabbats all intact it's the signal to synchronize adding seven days and this only happens every five or six years 
And now we're going to have a practical application just so you can see it for yourself. So we're looking at March 2012 as it's commonly known. As you can see, what's highlighted right here will be the first day of the year always. Now, we know that the equinox is sometime around this time, around March 20th, around March 21st, 2012. But we know based on the rule of the 364 day calendar, because it's 364 days, the new year is always going to begin on the fourth day of the week after the equinox so that would have been in 2012 on March 21st fast forward to March 2013 if we add 364 days to that this would have been the last day of the year and then this would be the new first day of the year for 2013 right here as you can see right there because it's the fourth day of the week and we know that the fourth day of the week based on this calendar begins the first day of the year so this would be the first day of the year right here however note what happens when we go to 2014. The year 2014 is when we would have had to resynchronize this calendar because after 364 days, we landed March 19th right there, but we're not yet at the equinox yet. So we'd have to add an additional week in order to resynchronize. And this is when it would have begun for 2014, when the calendar would have begun. And if we keep going, it actually adds up perfectly. And again, if you keep going, then March 25th, 2015 is when the first day of the year would have begun because if you add 364 days, you'd be right here. And again, it arrives always the same. It never changes. This is always going to be the first day of the year on the fourth day of the week. Now it's interesting for 2016, so for a couple of years ago, March 23rd, 2016 was year one actually, and it just so happened that this was on a full moon also, and see how it's still the fourth day of the week. This was the first of the year for 2016, and the reason is if you add 364, 2016 was also a leap year, so rather than it being on the 24th, it's now the 23rd. The year that we're currently in in 2017, because remember the Yaudium, the Hebrew years, they begin sometime around the spring equinox or afterwards. And again, Yahusha will return and will continue to restore everything to us. But for this current year that we're in, the new year began around March 22nd, 2017. This was day one. And we know days go from evening to evening. So really it began the evening of the 21st all the way until the evening of the 22nd. Now, if we add Add another 364 days to this then we can determine for next year when the year will begin just as we noted in the structure of the Enoch calendar you see how months 1 4 7 and 10 they begin right here on was so-called Wednesday on the fourth day of the week right here just as we noted in our feast calendar also here because here's the sixth day of the week or so-called Friday as it's commonly known look at months two 5, 8, and 11, and how the first day is always on the sixth day of the week. So in today's terms, according to the Gregorian calendar, that would mean it begins on Thursday evening and goes all the way until Friday evening. See how according to the structure and according to the pattern of months 3, 6, 9, and 12, the first day of the month is always considered the first day of the week, commonly known as Sunday, as we just saw, or from Saturday evening to Sunday evening, according to the Gregorian calendar for months 3, 6, 9, and 12. That's when they will start, as we just saw in the feast calendar. So again, we make note of that in the 2021 calendar as well, because you notice how months one, four, seven, and month 10, they all begin on the same day of the week. They all begin day four of the week or evening, Tuesday through Wednesday. They all begin at the same time. As you can see, month one, four, seven, and 10. They all begin Tuesday evening as you see highlighted and referenced and outlined right here. And then as we also went over earlier, you saw too how months 2, 5, 8, and 11, they all begin on the same day of the week as well. They all begin day 6 or evening Thursday through Friday from sundown to sundown or when the sun goes down evening Thursday. So you see that right here noted as well for months 2, 5, 8, and 11 as well, how they share the same pattern indeed. And then as we also went over for months 3, 6, 9, and month 12, as you can see right here, 
that they all begin on day one of the week or evening Saturday to Sunday from sundown to sundown as you can see right here. So you see right here they all begin on the same day of the week for months three, six, nine, and 12 respectively. And again, notice also how this is a 364-day calendar. Now, with the exception of an intercalary, which is an extra week inserted in order to keep the appointed time synced to the seasons as we've gone over with Brashith, Genesis chapter 1, verses 14, if you take a look at our calendar that was done back in 2020 for the current year that we're in, actually, notice how it began as of March 24th, 2020, this year when the sun went down. Well, 364 days later, and again, there's no intercalary, you arrive at what day? March 23rd, 2021 at sundown. So exactly 364 days later, you arrive to your new year, and it will be like that for 2022 as well. So again, proving to you that this is indeed a 364-day calendar. And then even when it comes to the appointed times, we see that when it came to 2020 specifically that Passover was on April 6, 2020 of this year. Well, if you add 364 days to that, you get what day? You get April 5th, 2021 if you add 364 days. So again, this is just to let you know and to confirm with you how this is in sync with not only the book of Kanuk, the book of Enoch, but also the book of Eubolium, the book of Jubilees as well, that tells us to keep and observe a 364-day calendar count. So prayerfully, this helps you have a better understanding of the calendar and the upcoming appointed times. Again, if you would like to learn how to observe them or what you need to do on those appointed times for the seven that are listed right here, if you would like to learn more about that, you can definitely do so by taking a look at our videos that have already been covered on these topics and subjects, and as well as the Sabbath too, as well as if you would like to learn more about why we observe these appointed times and why they're so important and how they have to do with scriptural end time events as well, you can also take a look at Leviticus chapter 23 to learn more about that. And again, take a look at our videos to learn more about the significance of these appointed times and why it's important for us to be striving to keep these appointed times according to this Kanuk ancient Enoch calendar and not according to when our enemies tell us when these appointed times are not according to the Jewish calendars, not according to any of our enemies, but according to how and when Yahua wants us to observe them. So again, the calendar will be linked in the description box below. Prayerfully, this video has been very helpful unto you and to your family and to all of those watching. Again, I will link all of the helpful links in the description box below so you can take a look at it. And again, the calendar will be available there so it is at your fingertips. But this is the calendar for 2021, and prayerfully you have a wonderful upcoming appointed times this upcoming year for 2021 indeed. Now, if you're new to this channel or network, or if you're wondering where you can find more resources for your spiritual walk and journey, here are some playlists and other tools that will be linked for you in the description box below. We have the Living Righteously, which is our playlist that covers the scriptures and also gives encouraging words and motivational words that can really help you out in case you missed any of them. Now, if you missed any of the scriptures, often ignore playlists or the videos because there have been over a hundred thus far. Well, that's all right, because you can take a look at our playlist of scriptures often ignored, where we cover more scriptures that have to do with end time prophecy, along with scriptures that are often commonly ignored in most places. You can also take a look at our Be Deceived No More playlist, where we go over the truth about topics such as religion, and topics such as the image and the mark of the beast so that you will be deceived no more. Now, if you're wondering about scriptures in the Torah specifically or the first five books of scriptures and wondering the truth about that, you can take a look at our Torah truth playlist where you will find more information and more scriptural resources on that as well. And if you're looking for more motivation, well, you can take a look at our motivation playlist as well. And we've also linked certain playlists such as the True Scriptural Israelites playlist 
playlist and also the documentaries playlist if you're looking for more historical facts and historical truths as well. You can find these playlists on the channel and you can also find these playlists linked in the description box along with helpful dictionaries and other resources along with the scriptures that can help you out on your spiritual walk and journey that's linked in the description box below. Prayerfully this video was helpful unto you and prayerfully these resources will also be helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying as always, Shalom.